So just like other energy generating facilities like coal, natural gas, solar, there's quite a bit of federal incentives. There are some key programs from the federal government that can help make a small hydro facility viable. Now, like so many federal incentives, there's a myriad of programs, and it's not necessarily easy to understand which program applies to which type of entity that would be owning a small hydro project. For instance, an irrigation district, a rural small business, or an ag producer may have access to a different level of federal incentives. Certainly some of the key ones are a production tax credit, generally about 1.1 cents a kilowatt hour for certain size small hydro facilities, and that one's obviously available only to entities that have a tax burden, so that's a for-profit entity. There's other incentives available only to rural small businesses, such as the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Rural Energy for America program, often called the REAP program. There you could get a 25% grant up to a half million dollars, maybe a guaranteed loan. If you're an ag producer, Natural Resource Conservation Service may have some funding to help a ag producer install a micro hydro facility, for instance, such as an irrigation pivot. And then finally, the Bureau of Reclamation can also have a program. If you're a Bureau of Rec customer, client, you might have access to the WaterSmart program to help develop your project. All those federal incentives are important, but I know the state level is also of equal, if not greater, importance. Yeah, the state has a pretty, Wyoming has a pretty good incentive program for, for small hydropower development. The Water Development Commission will, will fund 100% of feasibility studies for irrigation districts, municipalities. Unfortunately, uh, individual ag producers do not qualify for a water development So the type project. of entity matters? That couldn't be a small business or something like that that would get that kind of funding? That's right. Typically, they're irrigation districts, municipalities. Um, there's requirements water development has before they can give you uh, a project and a loan. For an example, if you're an irrigation district and you have a drop on your canal and you think, well, I wonder if I can develop hydropower there. Typically what they'd do is they'd apply to the Wyoming Water Development Commission to do a feasibility study. If the results of the feasibility study are favorable and look like it's, it's economical to, to develop hydropower on that drop structure, then the district would go and apply for a state loan and investment board loan. The Office of State Lands, uh, State Loan Investment Board, will provide loans um, for, for small hydropower projects. So this is a well-known SLIB loan, same type of money that you see fund a variety of projects on the state? That's exactly right. Loans are typically 20 to, 20, 20 to 30 years at around 4% interest rates. Uh, you have to have a water development study previously before you can apply for a SLIB loan. Municipalities in Wyoming are, are subject to a little more incentives. They can re apply for a state revolving fund loan. Um, a portion of these loans can be grants to where you don't have to pay back the loan. And these loans are fairly low interest rate, sometimes up to 0%. Uh, typically a 20 or 30 year term, even as low as 0% and say 25% of that is a grant where you don't have to pay it back. Municipalities can apply for a state revolving fund loan where unfortunately irrigation districts cannot. I'll add in one more. You were talking about incentives for the larger, the small hydro projects, but also a micro hydro project that net metered gets an implicit incentive from the state as well. Net metering, once again, that policy by the state allows you to one, interconnect with your utility if it's under 25 kilowatts, but it also allows you to get the full retail rate for what you produce. So if you produce an extra electron in May, you might get to use that electron in November, it depends upon the utility. But regardless, even within the month, you produce extra electrons, it offsets your own rate, and you get the full retail value for those. And at the end of the year, at the end of the calendar year, typically with most utilities, if you produce more and you consume, they have to buy them back from you at their avoided cost, which isn't a very high rate but it is certainly an incentive dictated by the state, and that's actually just a law. So it's not a program, it's a law that's open to everybody who has a system under 25 kilowatts that's safely connected to the electric grid. Federal, state, are there any other incentives that we have for hydro projects? There's some. Some utilities uh, can provide incentives to, to businesses within their service area. Uh, for example, Rocky Mountain Power has the Blue Sky Fund. Um, it's best to just check with your local utilities, see what kind of incentives they have for renewable energy. So when you stack all these together, federal, state, maybe even a utility incentive, incentives really matter to these projects. It's very conceivable to see how 25, 35, 40, maybe even 50% of a project could be underwritten through one of these incentive programs. So it's definitely an area that needs to be focused on when you're developing any project to see what you're eligible for based upon your entity type. Yeah, most certainly, and more times than not, incentives can make or break a deal on a, on a project. Yeah.